Welcome everyone from wherever you are joining us from. Thank you. Unfortunately, again this year, because we are not yet out of the woods as it relates to pandemic, we are still keeping our CJU virtual, just to be safe for our family, CJRs and clients. But I'm hoping that next year, we all will be able to do this in person in Santa Barbara once again. Our MC Jillian is going to give, keep you up to speed on a fantastic agenda that we have planned for you today that includes a lot of thought-provoking sessions and virtual networking. So I encourage you all to take advantage of all of it. Today, I will be speaking only for about five minutes to set the stage for my leadership team to focus on the amazing opportunity that growth in global e-commerce brings to affiliate and partnership marketing and how CJ is ready to help you drive growth. Last 12 months or 18 months, as you all know, lots and lots of new consumers have come to digital shopping. This is the first time they started shopping online and they are not really going to go back. Take my example. I would never shop online for shoes. Everything else is fine. But in the last 12 months, I am a convert and I love it. So as e-commerce has grown, so has the investment in our channel. And our channel has played a critical role in creating a lasting value, thus fundamentally resetting the trajectory of both e-commerce and affiliate marketing. The numbers in front of you for global e-commerce growth, they speak for themselves. They transcend regions and markets. Why is that? Why our channel is considered to be one of the best uh, in these times of e-commerce growth? Well, it works. It's accountable, it's transparent, it's performance oriented. It doesn't miss a single trend. Let's say mobile commerce, in-app commerce, or influencer marketing, we do it all. It allows to test new innovations and new publisher partners so that you can reach even more consumers with minimal risk, but really because it helps the consumer. Affiliate and partnership marketing platforms perform so well because this ecosystem creates authentic, trustworthy, and valuable experiences for consumers, supporting consumer across the entire customer journey. By doing so, it doesn't as much compete with other marketing channels, but actually amplifies entire marketing mix. Data proves it. Brands get 88% more incremental revenue when affiliate is in the journey, regardless of channel attribution. Data also proves that any given publisher model is very effective at each of these stages. It's not, it's a myth that content somehow is good at discovery and just at that, or coupons, deals, and cashback are good at decision and just at that. In fact, every publisher can do it all and our data proves that too. 83% of our journeys include only single publisher. But when customer journeys include multiple publisher partners, different opportunities to connect with consumer, the AOV grows. The result speaks for themselves. It's about 12 to 30% higher. What does this mean? Brands need to work with everyone. In offline, mall location matters. You definitely want to be in a mall where there's highest consumer traffic. The same applies to online shopping too. And our publishers give you that distribution. They give you that access to consumers. And if you're not there, then somebody else will steal your consumer. At CJ, we are here to make sure to help you to drive your growth. And we make it all possible. We do that through four key pillars. First one is technology. Over the last 18 months, we have more than doubled our engineering product investment so that we can continue to develop and release solutions that matter, universal tag, APIs, situational commissioning, new recruit, recruit partner solution, everything, API, and so on. Second pillar is data. Data is the best way to create an actionable insight and help you make smarter decisions. The scale of our network, we have so much data, but better than that, we have amazing data scientists who are continuously innovating solutions like category benchmarking, increment, affiliate incrementality, journey analysis, and so on. The third pillar is strategic partnerships. As we strengthen our core offering by partnering with best-in-class award-winning technologies, 
we want to bring specialized and strategic solutions to you seamlessly in one platform. Let's take Button for example, where our strategic partnership with Button is helping our clients, our brands and publishers tap into the potential of growing mobile in-app commerce. Creator IQ. As influencer marketing, marketing go, grows, with CIQ now you can do influencer marketing platform in seamless way through the lens of performance marketing. But the most important pillar that I'm most proud of is our people, our expertise. We hire the best talent, we nurture them so that they are continuously focused on your needs, your challenges, and helping you drive growth. I'm very proud of our people and I'm especially proud of my leadership team. So I'm super excited to hand on to my team who are going to talk about future of affiliate marketing and how CJ is going to help you drive growth. Thank you and welcome to CJU21. Hey. Thanks so much. I'm super excited to be discussing some of my favorite topics with some of my favorite people today. Uh, this crew and I spend quite a bit of time together, and I'm thrilled to welcome all of you into today's conversation. Uh, we'll be digging into some of the biggest topics in the industry and talking about how CJ is helping each of you continue to see success both now and into the future. I'm your moderator, Nicole Ron. I'm Senior Vice President of Global Marketing, Product Marketing and Business Systems here at CJ. And a large part of my role is understanding and responding to industry current events, ensuring that our teams and all of you have the most up-to-date thought leadership strategies and solutions to ultimately meet your needs. With that, we're gonna go ahead and get to know some of our other panelists. So Paula, why don't you kick us off and introduce yourself? Thanks, Nicole. Happy to. Hi, everyone. Paul Tibbet, I'm President at CJ. So I run the advertiser side of our business, which includes the teams that work with all of you existing advertisers, as well as our new business team that's looking for more advertisers to join our network and our corporate development team that work with some of our largest advertisers. Great. Hi, guys. Kelly Merkel, SVP, Global Publisher Development here at CJ. Um, for you publishers out there, I'm the one that's helping our team support you bringing new publishers into the network, ensuring that all of you are finding the right relationships and being successful in our network. Hi, everyone. My name is Desiree Toto. I'm responsible for the end-to-end -end platform support and innovation. So that platform that you access every day, that's my responsibility. And I'm Josh Peterson. I lead our data science team, and we're responsible for creating database solutions to help all of you guys solve your problems and create growth. Great. All right, we've got some big topics, so we're gonna dive right in. Uh, a trend towards performance marketing and affiliate marketing specifically has been making the news cycles quite a bit over the last 18 months. And as Mayer just mentioned in his keynote, and just as we saw with the 2007 recession, when there's economic uncertainty, there's an increased need to demonstrate how marketing investment is ultimately leading to measurable outcomes. But something that's different now versus what we saw in 2007 is the level of interest that we're seeing in this space. Uh, C-suite, digital decision makers, and everything in between are really turning an eye towards affiliate. And the staying power this time around is really here to stay. So in light of this, my first question to each of you is, what do marketers need to do to retain or increase the scope of affiliate marketing and what does that mean for the channel as we emerge from the pandemic? So I'll get started. If that's OK, Nicole, I'll go first. Great. Um, what an endorsement for our channel, right? And a major endorsement for digital, but also for our channel that during, you know, people's times of uncertainty, companies' times of difficulty, people have flowed into, into digital, but into our channel specifically. So it's really exciting, and it's a huge opportunity for us. There's a lot of data that you can read out there in the news about how much this shift has occurred and what the impact has been. A couple of stats that I like to keep in mind or talk about with people is the fact that online retail sales are going are projected to double in a five-year period from 19 to 24, according to eMarketer, 
a doubling of online retail sales. And by the end of that period, we'll make up 25% of all retail sales. So gone are the days where people would say, yeah, digital is growing, but it's like 10% of total sales. No, it's going to be a quarter of all sales by 2024, if you marketers correct. That shift is exciting and it massively accelerated during the pandemic. And so we've got a lot more buying happening online and in our channel specifically now than ever before. That's interesting, but you need to go down another layer to kind of decide what to do about that and how we help guide you, make sure that this shift sticks. So if we go down another layer <clears throat> within performance space, within affiliate, you see that we, yes, have had an increase in younger consumers, of course, but the biggest shift or increase in online buying behavior has occurred with older demographics, people like me and older, the old people that you're talking to on the phone right now. And the biggest challenge for us now is to make that behavior stick. So how do we do that? How do we make sure that happens? Um, one thing that all of you need to be really keenly aware of and focused on is making conversion seamless, right? So to get these consumers like Mayor, who's now buying his shoes online, uh, who are somewhat you know new, not necessarily, of course, to buying digitally in general, but even specifically within a category or for a type of product uh, or service or offering, to make that behavior stick, conversion needs to be really easy. Shopping cart abandonment tools out there like RevLifter, other tools and technologies, upsell it, yieldify, lean into those because we need to do everything we can to, to, to make this behavior stick. We also need to continue increasing touch points and I'll talk more about that later, but that's another key to making sure that the e-commerce habits uh, don't become one-offs and, and multiple touch points I'll talk about a little bit later. So I'll stop there. So yeah, I wanna um, jump in there, Paul, um, because you made a really good point and I want to elaborate a little bit more on like, how do we make sure this shift sticks? So with the continued focus on performance-based models, affiliate will be crucial to reach and optimize the experiences of these online shoppers, right? Paul just mentioned that older demographics like myself um, are shopping online. I'm a heavy, heavy shopper online. So I've been doing this for quite a while, but because all of these new consumers are joining um, the online shopping experience, it's our job to make sure that we're making it seamless. And within affiliate, we have the ability to do that in a performance-based model. Our publishers have all these amazing shopping destinations that are go-to for consumers, and then they drive those consumers to our advertisers page. Now, both sides of that equation they wanna optimize that journey and they wanna make sure they're giving them the right experience to get them to convert. And that's why marketing technology companies that Paul had mentioned like RevLifter and Upsell It and Yieldify and other ones are gonna be critical to how we continue to make sure affiliate in this model sticks. And what our role is at CJ is to continue to remove those barriers to allow our clients to find, test, and implement these marketing technology solutions all within our performance-based ecosystem. Yeah, I think what Des is saying, like it's really about that flexibility and it's about being able to evolve the business to match ever evolving consumer needs. We, we definitely saw that happen with our publisher partners, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, there was, there was this rush to make sure that the newer advertisers that maybe hadn't really been as big in e-commerce before were front and center on these sites because consumers were buying things that they hadn't really bought online before. Uh, Paul and I talked about this a lot last year between our teams and we did a bit of a podcast about it, uh, looking at how there was big evolution, first of all, in what publishers were offering and showing to consumers but then also the secondary piece of that that we've seen over the last year is this new business models that are emerging to account for these new consumer behaviors. So we're always looking on our side of the business to how are, what are those new partners? What are those, those new business models? Who are those new kind of up and coming opportunities that we need to have an affiliate? And we've got teams that are supporting that. I have a BD team that's bringing those new publishers in. We have our onboarding team that's there to help educate those publishers on affiliate, get them going in the network, set them up for success, so that when those consumers are out there looking for those brand touch points, 
there's a publisher there that can that can meet that need. You know, we're seeing this a lot with like buy now pay later publishers um, over the last year. A lot of newer fintech mobile focused publishers coming up that we're trying to you know bring in and help facilitate that recruitment within CJ. Um, and so we're going to talk more later, a little bit of a shameless plug about my other session today, uh, talking about partner discovery and what we can do, what we've done from a tech and expertise standpoint to help facilitate those relationships within CJ, because the needs are changing. And so the partnership should be changing too, right? So you have to have those right connections in the right place. Yeah. If, if I could jump in with one more thing, Nicole, that occurred to me after um, so it's, it's about seamless. It's about making conversion easy and, and, and sticky, but you know, we also don't want to forget about loyalty, right? And, and in general, the concept of loyalty is something that because of a big group of publishers have been working on loyalty for a long time, affiliates particularly good at. So don't lose sight of that as well as you look and lean into these new models and new technologies. Uh, don't forget about loyalty because a lot of these shoppers, whether it's new to affiliate or new to certain categories, they realize that affiliate gives them the opportunity through loyalty publishers to get more value out of their dollar, which is really important to people these days than shopping elsewhere or outside of affiliate. So that's really important mm -hmm. to keep in mind. You know, all these things are about driving e-commerce consumer behavior loyalty and driving incremental results. I mean, I think that's a key word that we have to keep in mind too, because affiliate is really good at incrementality, something Josh knows a heck of a lot more than I do, so I should probably shut up. But incrementality is something we can help with as well. Yeah, and I think what's great is that we see affiliate doing exactly what Paul, Kelly, um, and Desiree are talking about. So when we did a previous study, when we see affiliate included in a shopper's path to purchase, they drive 88% more revenue than when affiliate's not included in that shopper's path to purchase. The second thing that we learned recently is that when there's more than one affiliate included in that path to purchase, that conversion rate rises by 360% and the average order value goes up 12 to 30%. So affiliates great at making that conversion seamless for a shopper and also increasing the value of those shoppers for a brand. Great. Yeah, with this shakeup in shopping behavior and a major influx of new to digital shoppers like, like you, Paul, um, this ultimately reset the trajectory of e-commerce. And I'm really interested to hear what you all think are some of the pitfalls that need to be avoided that ultimately can can hurt consumer loyalty in a post-COVID world. Can I, can I go first again, Nicole, is that okay? Absolutely, yeah, I'd love to hear yeah. from you. And by the way, unlike my year, I've been buying my shoes online for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing, you know, like the thing that I worry about a lot and, and I, I I think in this time in particular, it's it's a little bit of a scary pitfall for on the advertiser side is to assume that my customers are my customers. Like they came, they made one shopping, you know, one shopping trip, I got them, they're my customers. Um, be careful of that for, for a few reasons. There's a lot of increased competition right now. Again, if you've done well through this period and this shift, that's fantastic, but it's also brought in a lot of new competition, right? I'm sure you've noticed that depending on what category you're in, it's even more intense than, than in other places because people realize, hey, all this money is flowing to digital, all this shopping behavior has shifted. I'm gonna take advantage of that either by launching a new brand, launching an extension brand, and those that were a little behind the curve, we saw this definitely within within our client list is some people who were you know, leaned in heavily to digital and some that were a little behind the curve. Those that were behind the curve are now lead in heavily because they had to for their survival. So the competition is stronger. So you need to be careful not to make that assumption. Um, and the second thing is, you know, if you're in retail, for example, and, and this past 18 months have been good for you online, know that travel has come back in some places, it will continue to come back in others. So the, the competition for just the wallet for dispensable income is gonna increase as well. So don't get complacent. You need to ensure that you're staying in front of your consumers and, and that those consumers don't eventually convert you with, comp with competition, for example. Um, so it's really important, increase touch points. In that Google study we've, we've talked about, we've put out some, some white paper on in, in the past, we talk about the messy middle and the fact that 80% of the time, if a competitor comes in and makes a stronger offer for an item that they were shopping with, uh, shopping for on your site, 
they will convert with your competitors. So it's critical that you're in front of them wherever they are. Um, some strategies to do that, of course, include working with multiple publishers, but also multiple publisher types, right? Because each consumer is in a different place in their journey, different publisher types uh, sort of cater to that behavior. And also taking an omni-channel approach, like that I'm talking about within affiliate, but beyond affiliate, thinking in an omni-channel way. Don't treat affiliate as a silo. Um, work with the other channels in tandem. You know, an example of that would be you're sending out an email uh, to, you know, with a specific offer at a particular time. In that same time period, use your affiliate pub relationships to send out newsletters that, that kind of give that same offer. Consider enticing them with increased cash back at that time. Again, when you're trying to make that push. At the same time, coordinate with your influencer network to promote the product, right? That gives you yet another touch point for some people who are at a different stage in, in the cycle. These are things I'm sure you're thinking about, but you really need to be intense on them as, as this period of heightened competition and make sure that this behavior sticks and that your, your newly found consumers stay with you. Um, you've really got to make that, again, that journey seamless. I want to hit that point one more time. And I, I think an example of an advertiser who's doing many of these things well is, is, is Nike. I'm not sharing any inside secrets. Everybody knows that they've done a really good job of making their, their buying process really seamless. They do a great job of, of making that easy, having everything in checkout ready for you to go. They do tie different pieces with their uh, influencer network out to other marketing efforts that they're, they're making out in the marketplace. So that's, that's an example of somebody who's doing it well right now. To add to that, I think we also see that increased competition in our data as well. So when we look at most retailers in our network, more than half their customers are purchasing with competitors within our network as well. When we look at all the people that shopped with a retailer, but they didn't purchase, we also see that they purchased with another brand within the network. And a lot of times it's with another publisher or a publisher class or um, model that that brand is not working with. So customer loyalty, I think it's really changed over time. Mm -hmm. Maybe it used to be brand specific, but now it's about a shopping experience that only a brand and a publisher can kind of come together to create and provide for a shopper. Yeah, I think Josh made a really interesting point where he's talking about potentially missing out on sales because you're not working with a particular publisher model or publisher. Uh, you know, from, from my POV, one of the major pitfalls that we see is an assumption that affiliate is only there to close. That, you know, you go to affiliate because you want that last click and we want to close that sale. Uh, so while we are definitely still an acquisition-based channel, our data shows that consumers are interacting with affiliate in ways that you may not really expect. You know, for example, uh, with our incentive and loyalty publishers, we see that 62% 62, 62 of their traffic falls during the discovery and evaluation stage when there's more than one publisher in the model. So these consumers are looking around, they're looking for the best deal, they're looking at multiple brands and using all of this information to, uh, to make their decisions. And so thinking about affiliate again, as that way to like amplify your efforts in your other business is really gonna be where we're helping support that customer journey, that customer experience and drive up that conversion. Um, and, and one place that we've seen this uh, in CJ and in affiliate in general is our influencer and creator marketing publishers, sorry, our influencer and creator publishers. You know, there was a pretty strong knee jerk reaction at the beginning of uh, the pandemic and a lot of money left the channel. Um, and now it's coming back. It's coming back with a vengeance. And, you know, I, there's not really any controversy, I think, anymore for brands that it's really an integral part of their strategy now. Uh, and you can just see all the movement in the space. You know, there's new platforms, there's mergers, there's acquisitions, there's new solutions that are being released all the time. And we think that that's really a, a, a place where we have to continue to focus. It's not new for CJ. We've, we've had a content team and we're working in the influencer space for a long time, but we're continuing to add that functionality to make that discovery and those relationships uh, easier to find and easier to get off the ground. Great, Jan. I, I have to ask you, Kelly, but what about mobile? <laughs> yeah, mobile. Mobile's been really interesting to watch during the pandemic, uh, especially. I mean, I think mobile's been a, a huge buzzword in the space for a long time. We've really seen that uh, uh, escalate and ramp, just like we've seen e-commerce in general really grow. 
mobile's been right there with it and, and exceeding desktop in some situations. You know, on TJ, we saw more mobile traffic in our network last year than desktop traffic. And that's never happened before. So that's something that we're watching and we're making changes for. You know, I talked earlier about, you know, my team focusing on bringing in new publishers. We're always looking for new mobile publishers to bring into the network. It's a big focus of ours. We are especially seeing this in some of that FinTech card linked offer space. Um, so those consumers, sorry, those publishers that are easing, greasing the wheels to get to that conversion and making it easier and easier for consumers to make those decisions. Uh, the, the second piece is our launch of our button partnership uh, also. You know, that's really a way for us to ensure that there is holistic tracking across the network and that, you know, we've got activity that's happening, consumers that are interacting on mobile, but without that piece to fill in the gaps of where that true value is coming from, you know, we're, we're missing out on being able to show that as an opportunity. So we're really excited about that as a way to, you know, again, extenuate um, what we're doing from a mobile POV. Yeah, I, if I could jump in there, Kelly, I th I, like there are some advertisers who are jumping on that opportunity. I'm thinking of a big travel advertiser. There's, there's many others that push out app specific offers to increase loyalty. So again, back to my theme of loyalty, um, certainly our, our teams are working to encourage the use of these technologies, including button, to make sure that the consumer journey is fully tracked and that you can take advantage of these kind of environment specific places to talk to your consumers and, and drive more loyalty. If you don't have app to app tracking in place um, and say, you, you know, your consumer goes to top cash back and the advertiser there doesn't have enough tracking, you know, they then get a message saying this advertiser doesn't support and you get you know, redirected to MWeb or whatever. So it's, it's a suboptimal experience for the consumer um, and you could have a much better experience by, by having all of this tied together. It just leads to a better experience, but more importantly, higher conversion and, and more loyalty. Great. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna to pivot to a really big question here. We're about the halfway mark and I, I, I wanna spend some time on this one and do have a few other questions for you all. But this one is a big one, um, and that is, what are some of CJ's top responsibilities that we have ultimately to deliver in order to help clients remain nimble and see success? Of course, both now as we uh, exit the pandemic and, and into the future. So I'm gonna jump in uh, being from product and innovation. I, I, I wanna put in my two, two cents here. So one, you know, we have a lot of empathy for everyone watching this today. Um, every one of you are being tasked with an exasperated situation of having less budget, less resources, but you have to do more, right? So how can we help and ensure that you remain nimble and we can support you through this? So our mission is focused on the enablement of channel amplification by finding ways to help our clients see more growth with less budget and less resources. Um, affiliate has always been and will continue to be a perfect test bed for new technology in a low risk environment. So the opportunity for us, for CJ, for you, is to enable those marketing technology companies within our performance-based ecosystem by eliminating the headaches of integrations, the lack of resources that you have on your side, we'll take on that burden and make it into an easy click to enable marketplace. And we've already started that journey um, and we will continue it. But what we've done so far is we've accelerated all of our product innovation and our output. We've doubled our investment to continue to bring on top talent as we continue to forge deeper strategic partnerships with companies like Shopify, Magento, LiveRamp, Button, SimilarWeb, and Creator IQ being the most recent one. So this is our trajectory and we're gonna continue to do this to allow you to be nimble and successful and use our platform to make that happen. The thing I think I would add to that is that performance marketing has always hinged on the value that can be measured. And over time, we've gotten really good at that measurement. So what we can measure, how we can measure the questions and kinds of things that we can answer. Um, and at that core, that measurement brings transparency and accountability to the channel in a privacy friendly way. Um, and we've continued to do this by combining experts in affiliate strategy, data science, technology, and our clients' fantastic ideas and feedback. 
A past example of this was our customer journey solution. It started off as a solution from our data science team for a few clients to help answer some critical business questions. And then from there, we, in collaboration with product, engineering, client development teams, marketing, and more, we developed a customer facing solution that was powered by data, but refined by experience. Um, so this led to a, a solution that created transparency and insight into that customer journey that allowed both advertisers and publishers to go from, I think this is happening to truly see what happened and uncover opportunities and growth. Um, and this is just one example. We have a lot of places to go, but measurement will always be at that core. And it's our responsibility to make sure that we can bring the best of that to you guys. Yeah, I, I just want to uh, accentuate what Josh is saying. Um, I don't know if you picked up on this, but a lot of this team, we work in collaboration, but our partnership from a product perspective with DS, with data science has been perfect. It's been able to amplify our development cycle because we're working so closely together. Um, our teams are in, long, in lockstep to ensure that we can address those burning questions that you have. And with Journey, Currently, we continue to want to innovate on that, right? So we're launching these journey products. We're going to layer in more data points to expose cross-channel journey through our universal tag. We also have our clients who want to be able to see the total value that affiliate provides compared to that of other channels. Again, focusing on outcomes, not just touch points. And we want to continue to innovate on our actionable solutions. So we have situational commissioning that allows you to pull different levers um, to be able to optimize the data that you have in platform or within the data science reporting suite. And we'll continue to build our products and solutions off of our universal tag foundation. So if you're already integrated, you're really already set up for success. If you're not, you really need to make it a priority to take advantage of this product and take advantage of everything that we're doing as Universal Tag is the foundation to make that all happen. Yeah, I, I have to say, like, as a marketer of affiliate marketing, already I'm at a role that the solutions and thought that comes out of the partnership between data science and product is such a treat. It's really been um, incredible to be able to answer some of the toughest questions that come across our plate, whether that's incrementality, um, what is it, what a journey is look like, what, how should we be using those and, and everything else that's kind of behind the scenes that we haven't yet released, uh, but is coming soon. So I have to punctuate that too. All right. I'm going to switch to a big one that's come up. Um, there's been a ton of buzz around recent companies kind of entering into the affiliate space, such as Instagram and Shopify. And I'd love to hear a little bit about what this means for content creators, brands, publishers, and, and ultimately affiliate marketing in general. Yeah, I think that one, I think that one comes to me first. Uh, <laughs> every time there is a new announcement, my inbox gets flooded. Um, did you see this? What do you think about this? What are we going to do about this? Um, which I love. I, I, I love the influencer creator space. Uh, and, and I think it's great. I think it's great for the industry. You know, there's really this kind of now mainstream uh, expectation of content creators adding value to a brand. Uh, we've seen that value for a while. You know, I talked earlier, we've had a content team since 2013. Um, we're continuing to scale it. Uh, it's just it's just great to finally see that validation um, of the, the value there. And and honestly, in our view, you know, there's a lot of things going on, a lot some consolidation, some growth. Um, we think there's always really going to be a value in tapping into the network effect um, with a, with a partner like CJ. You know, brands have really diverse goals. There's a huge diversity of social platforms, tracking capabilities, uh, and there's all kinds of creators out there that you can work with. And and advertisers really don't want to like pigeonhole themselves into, into one space. Uh, also, the creators are working across a variety of platforms. You know, most creators aren't just TikTok or aren't just Instagram or aren't just, you know, on a blog. They're working across all of those. Pinterest, owned and operated, websites, blogs, podcasts. You know, like I could lose my breath, like naming all of the different kind of channels that these creators can tap into. So it's really great. It's really great to see. Yeah, I have to say, like, I, I sit on a, a consumer focus group for a brand that I'm really passionate about. And 
you know, the last round that we did, one of the questions that the brand asked of all of us was, how are you discovering new products? And every single person in the group talked about a different place that they were starting their discovery journey on how they got inspired for home goods or decoration or, or clothing styles, um, myself included. And I, I think one of the things that we sometimes lose sight of as marketers is one of the most valuable tools that we have at our disposal. And that's our personal experience. If we really take a pause and look at how we go about our own discovery and evaluation and purchase decisions, you know, they're varied and they're intricate and they're different every single time, depending on what we're looking for. So what you're saying makes a heck of a lot of sense. Do, can you talk a little bit about um, what we're doing in light of all of this in, in addition to what we've done in the past for creators, Kelly? Yeah, I mean, I think it I think it dovetails nicely where you're talking about how consumers are discovering products and discovering influencers. There's also a discovery phase in the in the relationship part, right, where advertisers are looking for the right influencers or creators to work with and creators and influencers are working, looking for the right brands to work with. And so that's been a huge part of our strategy is really making that process really easy and continuing to build on that. Um, we have a couple different ways that we're that we've looked at it. You know, when we're thinking about more of a kind of self-serve option, we've had our content certified network in place for a long time. This is a way for us to uh, pre-vet advertisers and publishers and ease that connection inside the network so that they can easily be able to say, oh, I see this partner checks these boxes. And so therefore I have a really great way of, of connecting with them and finding them and starting that path down a relationship. What we just released and something that we're all really excited about is um, with our Creator IQ launch, we're now gonna have more of that data enhancement also within CJ. So we're bringing in, right now we've been, um, been able to bring CJ insights to the table. Now we're gonna be able to bring internet wide insights to the table of what is the engagement level of a publisher? What is the What are the likes that they're getting? What does their audience look like? And all of that is, is at their fingertips. So this allows publishers to really be able to showcase their value. And this, this is, goes beyond just influencers. This is all publishers in the network. Being able to really show, here's the reach that I can bring. And, and publishers, all you have to do when we're ready, register your social handles, we'll have all this information. It's really easy. Um, and it's right there. It's right there in, in platform. Um, when we're thinking about more of a, like, I got all worked up. I love these. I love these. Like, it's, so, it's so exciting. I'm like sweating. Um, <laughs> I'm the same way, Kelly. I'm the same way. I know. It's so great. Um, you know, all this new stuff going on. And, and even when we're thinking about our agency services, you know, we've had our VIP campaign solution in market for a while. That's really a, a really amazing, customized, completely bespoke campaign service that we offer. And we're going to be continuing to flesh that out and build that out and, and even bringing some agency partnerships into the loop uh, later this year to make sure that we're, again, meeting those partners' um, needs. Uh, we're looking at uh, figuring out how we best supply all those services at whatever price point, whatever investment, whatever goals, KPIs, both our advertisers and our publishers have. Uh, by the way, I only email you like three times an hour when one of those announcements comes out. <laughs> you, Des, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you think, what do you think, What do you think? I just I want to add one point. Um, in addition to telling you I don't email you that much, um, <laughs> is the shift in investment, right? So you said at the beginning of the pandemic, I think earlier you were talking about the pullback, the push back in has been dramatic for you know a lot of our advertisers in the past few years but you know even now that things have have, have kind of the uncertainty around the pandemic has, has gone away a little bit um part of it i think has to do obviously with the with the efficacy with how good the, the content creators have gotten at, at doing good things for these programs but the economics have gotten easier to quantify and so advertisers are able to show the return they're getting yeah, the yeah, but like not to interrupt, but yeah. like that's one about that's another additional value that we're bringing to the table, right? Like not every influencer platform or service that you're using can tie in that conversion data. And we're really? you know, with performance marketing being such a big buzzword right now, being able to complete that circle is critical. Exactly. Totally agree. And and I think that's what makes this kind of 
you know, um, you know, total uh, launch and, and growth of this whole category of publishers so exciting. It allows us, even as a channel, to kind of make good on 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 our promise of being across the entire journey that much stronger, right? Because we've got you know the ability to drive demand and and drive great conversion, and and content influencers really allow us to to make good on that and let us realize that full potential. So. Uh, a lot more to come there. We have some brands who, like larger brands, who are always on when it comes to content and influencer strategy. Some come in for, you know, a specific point, maybe like an anomaly channel strategy on a on a specific product or or a particular offer, like I was mentioning earlier. Others are always on, and and because they've seen the payoff, they've seen that through our data that this is really working. The other thing I want to add there is the exciting part is is we've had a lot of experience with this. This is, we're now completing that picture, but all the other things that we've had decades of experience in, really, you know, from benchmarks to customer journey to incrementality, we get to add all of that to these metrics as well. So I think it's this kind of perfect combination here where we're gonna get a lot of synergy. Um, it'll be exciting. Same, all right. Well, I'd love to talk all day and know that we definitely can. Um, I, we've got time for one more question and we're gonna have to keep it brief. But I'm going to ask each of you, if you have one takeaway for marketers as we look towards the future, what would it be? I'll go first again. All right. See how, see how I do that? Nobody's I do. I love it. Nobody's yelled at me yet, so I'm going to keep doing it. Um, and it's the last <laughs> question. Uh, I think, you know, you've heard me say these same things, but if, if you've made gains in the past 18 months or you've got new consumers, even though overall your business was down, don't take those gains for granted. So a few themes that you've heard me hit on a few times, make it seamless, make conversion easy, drive loyalty to maintain that audience shift, including embracing new technologies being offered on our platform through things that we've built uh, and connections we've made to other technologies. So make it seamless, drive loyalty, and, and keep these gains we've made. Yeah, I think uh, it's all about that customer experience. You know, there's there's some pretty major themes we've been hitting on throughout our talk today, and seamlessness and customer experience I think have been top of mind for for all of us. And you know, there's a lot of opportunity to partner uh, across the board with different publishers, different advertisers, so that you're where those consumers are, and you're making it easy for them to discover your brand, to learn more about your brand, and to convert with your brand. And I think that is going to be you know, a huge opportunity to really keep that in mind and think about that as we're as we go into this uh, new year or end of this year. So from my perspective, um, come to us first. If you don't see what you're looking for, let us know. Um, CJ is constantly launching new solutions. There's a very good chance that we already have what you need. And if not, we're constantly evolving and releasing new solutions to meet our clients need either homegrown with us building it or forging very deep strategic partnerships to make sure we're able to deliver that to you through our platform. And to echo what Desiree said, I would also let your data drive your decisions. So we continue to create and release solutions that aim to empower you to measure results holistically, identify opportunity and drive performance. Great. Awesome. Great takeaways. And as always, it is a real pleasure discussing our industry with each of you. Um, I know we've got a lot of really great content lined up for the rest of the event, but that concludes our leadership discussion for today. Uh, with that, I'm actually going to hand it back over to Jillian to tell you up what's up next. And a big thank you all to, to everybody who's attended for participating. And I look forward to seeing you around at other sessions. Thank you.